Number one, the temperature was recorded at several times during the day. Function T gives the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit n hours since midnight. Here's the graph for this function. For each time interval, decide if the rate of change is positive, negative, or zero. So this first interval that we're looking at, um, we want to go from n equals 1 to 5. So we want to look here is the n. So n equals 1 is probably this dot right here, right? We go to 1 and go up. And then 5 is this dot. So I'm just connecting the n equals 1 to the n equals 5. And then we want to look at the slope of that line. So remember that we read a slope like we read a book. So we read from left to right. And this line is going down. So this one is going to have a negative rate of change. So then for this next one, we'll look at n equals 5 until n equals 7. Let me get a new color. So n equals 5 is still about this dot. And then 7, um, this would be like 7.5 because that's halfway between 5 and 10. So 7 is probably here. And that one looks like it's going up. Even if it's ever so slightly, it looks like it's going up. And so that would be a positive rate of change. For um, the next one, we'll look at 10 and 20. So we'll go 10 up to the dot, and then we'll go over to 20 up to the dot and connect those. So that's our average rate of change here. And that slope, again, looks to be going up when we look from left to right. And so this is going to be a positive rate of change. Next one is from um, 15 to 18. So here's 15. Go up and find a dot. And then 18. So this is 17.5. So 18 is going to be about here. And so it looks like right there. This one appears to not be going up or down. It stays flat. So this one is going to be a zero rate of change. And then the um, final one here. If we look at from 20, so here's the dot at 20. And then 24, you know, would be somewhere over here. And that looks to be negative. So it's going down um, from left to right. So that one's going to be a negative slope. Number two, the graph shows the total distance in feet walked by a person as a function of time in seconds. Was the person walking faster between 20 and 40 or 80 and 100 seconds? So again, this gets into the idea of average rate of change. So let's look at from 20 to 40. So here's 20 and then here's 40. So here's kind of the slope between those two intervals. Then let's take a look at 80 to 100. So 80 is here, 100 is here. And so that blue line, now I can obviously actually move this. You can't when you're writing it on your paper. But if we go here, I can see that this blue line is steeper than the orange line. So that means that the average rate of change was greater from 80 to 100. So they're walking faster. Um, between... 80 and 100 seconds. So same idea in part B. Was the person walking faster between um, 0 and 40? Okay, so we'll look at 0 to 40. So here's 0. 40 is here. So I just connect it to the graph. Um, or was it, were they going faster between 40 and 100? So again, we'll go 40, find the graph, and then we'll go to 100, find the graph. So which one 
is steeper or a greater rate of change. And so we can see this time that the green one is steeper. And again, if I could move my, um, when I move my line over, you can see that the green is steeper. Um, you could do a similar idea by like laying a ruler on here. So you could like lay a ruler along it. And then you could just move the ruler um, to the other part. So let's see. So if I did this to see the steepness of the green, then I could just pick my ruler up and move it and see that that's a steeper line than the purple too if you were having trouble seeing it. So that means that they're walking faster um, from or between 0 and 40. Number three, the height and feet of a squirrel running up and down a tree is a function of time in seconds. Here are statements describing the squirrel's movement during four intervals of time. Match each description with a statement about the average rate of change for the function for that interval. So if you read kind of one through four, it, we're looking for a rate of change that's negative, a rate of change that's zero, a rate of change that is small but positive, or a, um, a rate of change that's large but positive. So small and positive are both going to be going up, but the small positive is going to be less steep, right? So it's going to be flatter than the one that's large and positive. So let's take a look. Um, so A, the squirrel runs up the tree very quickly. So up the tree and fast. So that's going to be this large positive rate of change. They're going to be getting up quickly. So large positive. The squirrel starts and ends at the same height. So if they start and then they go around and then they end at the same height, that's going to have an average rate of change of zero because at the beginning and the end, they stayed the same. The squirrel runs down is going to be the negative rate of change, number one. And then the squirrel runs up the tree, but slowly will be that small positive in number three. Number four, the percent of voters between the ages of 18 and 29 that participated in the United States Presidential elections between the years of 1988 and 2016 are shown in the table. We only vote for president every four years, so that's why you only see those years represented. The function P gives the percent of voters between 18 and 29 years old that participated in each election year. Determine the average rate of change between 1992 and 2000. So we're looking at how much does it change between those years, okay? So we want the change um, over the years. So change per year. So you want to look at um, 92 to 2000. So how much did that change? So you take where it ended minus where it started. So we're going to do 34.5 minus 42.7 and then divided by the change in years. And so you can do 2000 minus 1992 or you could have just known that that's eight years. So 34.5 minus 42.7 was a decrease in 8.2%. And that makes sense because we can see from 92 to 2000 it went down. And then we'll divide that by 8. So our average rate of change was minus 1.025%. Part B says pick two different values so that the average rate of change will be negative. Um, so what you have to do is see that the starting um, the starting number and the one that it ends at goes down, right? So we see 42 down to 34. That's a negative rate of change. So pick another set of numbers where the rate of change will decrease. 
So if I, you know, want to pick 48 to 40.9, that's going to decrease. So that's going to be a negative rate of change when I calculate it. Um, so we'll look at the change. So we're going to go the new year, which is 40.9 um, the percent minus the initial one, 48.4, and then divided by the years. And the, the changing years is just four years, right? Because it was 2008 to 2012. And so then just subtract these. So 40.9 minus 48.4. And you get a decrease of 7.5% in those four years. So then we'll divide by four. And we get that the average rate of change is negative 1.875%. Then part C wants us to get a positive average rate of change. So now the numbers that we pick need to go up. So now we need to go up from the one that we start to the one that we end. So if I look here at 45 and I go to 48.4 for 2004 to 2008, that's going to give me a positive rate of change. So again, we'll put our new number, 48.4, minus our first number and then that was a change in four years because it's from 2004 to 2008 so we'll divide that by four so 48.4 minus 45 gives us a 3.4 percent increase in those four years so if we divide by four that gives us an average rate of change of 0.85 percent per year Number five, Jada walks to school. The function D gives her distance from school in meters as a function of time. Okay, so we have the function um, gives her distance. So the output is going to be the distance. And the input is going to be the time in minutes since she left home. So what does D of 10 equals zero represent? That means when she's 10 minutes, when it's been 10 minutes since she left home, um, she is at school. So in 10 minutes, she is really at school, right? Because she's zero, um, zero meters from school. So she is at school. Um, zero meters. So you could be real literal about it and say in 10 minutes she's zero meters from school, or you could say what that actually means. It means that she's at school after 10 minutes. Number six, again, Jada walks to school. So same thing here. It's this same function that we just did in number five. So which equation tells us that Jada is 600 meters from school after five minutes? So remember we said that this function um, gives us the distance when we input the time, right? So when we put the time since she left, it'll give us back the distance. And so this distance is 600 that we want back and the time is five minutes. So we want it to be D of five equals 600, which is letter A. Number seven, a news website shows a scatter plot with a positive relationship between the number of vending machines in a school and the percentage of students who are absent from school on average. The headline reads, vending machines are causing our youth to miss school. What's wrong with this claim? Um, so it's the use of the word cause, right? So scatter plots don't actually show causality. They can only show association. So um, scatter plots can't show causality. 
they can only show association. So what's a better headline for this information? So you can still say that there's some type of relationship here. Um, you just can't say that you know what's causing it. So you can say vending machines in school seem to be correlated or associated with um, student absences, but we aren't sure why or we aren't sure of the cause or something like that. But you can't say that they actually cause each other. They are associated, but we're not really sure why.